Hey, it's Zach from How Chew. Welcome back. Today I'm going to show you how to build your own Raspberry Pi power button. Now, as you probably know, the Raspberry Pi doesn't come with a power button built in, and that's intentional to save on both costs and encourage you to do projects like this, which is the whole point of the Raspberry Pi. Um, and you need a power button to shut it down safely. You can't just like rip the cord out of the wall as I've covered before in other videos, because anything that's being written to memory at that moment is going to become corrupted. Like imagine if you're using RetroPie and you're saving a game and in the background it's saving or something like that or it's writing some cache files and suddenly power is cut, well then those files are incomplete and it's not like they're just going to magically know, you know how to repair themselves. So you always want to shut it down safely and so what I'm going to show you how to do is make your own Raspberry Pi power button that will safely shut it down when it's pressed and then also wake it up. Now if you prefer a written guide for this, I've also linked in the video description to the How To Guide uh, for this very topic, as well as a link to all the tools and materials you'll need to do this project. Now things you're gonna need for this project. If you don't have a soldering iron, you can actually buy pre-made buttons, and I'll link to this in the uh, video description. Um, but if you do have a soldering iron, this is a really easy project. All you're gonna need is a normally open button. And what that is, is it means that the circuit is open until you press it, and then once you press it, it closes the circuit. There are also normally closed buttons, which are closed by default, and when you press it, it opens the circuit. So this is a normally open circuit. The switch is open, right? And then when you press the power button, it closes it. Okay, now this is actually a normally closed circuit. And when you press the power button, it opens it. Now, if you're not sure if a button is normally open or normally closed, you can use your multimeter with a continuity tester and just carefully put them on the pins. Okay, now it's not making any sound. Once I press it, it does. That means it's normally open. Okay, let's find a normally closed switch. Now, that one only beeps when the button's released. That's normally closed. Okay, here's what you're gonna need. So you're gonna need a normally open power button. You're gonna need two female jumper wires. So these are for doing like breadboarding or connecting things. Um, you will need the female one, which doesn't have the pin, and we're gonna cut this off and solder it. And you're gonna need some shrink wrap, shrink wrap tubing, which you slide over and heat up with a lighter, and then it'll um, help to protect from uh, shorts. And of course, you'll need a soldering iron, and I recommend a soldering exhaust fan. This is a 3D printed one that I made. Um, I made a guide on this. I can link in the video description too, if you wanna check it out. Also always helpful if you have it are some helping hands for soldering. Now again, if you don't have a soldering iron or you don't know how to solder, um, it's a good time to get one. This is a really easy project and a perfect opportunity to learn how to solder. Um, but again, if you don't want to, you can just uh, buy the switch instead and then I'll walk you through the software part in a bit. Comically small coffee. Okay, so take your jumper wires and we're gonna wanna strip these. Then use whatever wire strippers you have or a pair of scissors to carefully strip these wires. Now, a lot of these jumper wires are pretty low quality and they have really thin um, conductors in them. So just be careful not to strip too much of the conductor away. I like to put some double-sided foam tape on the bottom of my helping hands to keep it from moving because these things are generally pretty terrible. Okay, before you solder these, we're gonna wanna go ahead and put our, our shrink wrap on here. And if you don't have shrink wrap, you can just use electrical tape but uh, this is definitely a lot cleaner. All right, it's not the best soldering job. It's kind of hard to do it with the camera here. It's pretty good though. Okay, so then go ahead and slide your shrink wrap over the contacts here and heat it up with your pink lighter. Sweet. All right, just to make it extra pro, I like to put this guy over here and uh, just cover it up fully. Try to use indirect heat when you're heating up shrink wrap. I'm kind of uh, impatient. I don't want to make you wait too long. So Now you can use any Raspberry Pi for this project. Raspberry Pi Zero, Raspberry Pi 3, 3B+, Raspberry Pi 4, any one that you want. Um, it'll work the same. 
I use the same color wire because it doesn't matter how you connect this as long as you connect it to the right pins. So basically how this works is we're gonna connect this to GPIO3 and ground, which are pins five and six. So one, two, three, four, five, six. And when the button is pressed, it'll actually run a script that's on the Pi that'll safely shut it down. Okay, now I wanna add the power button to my Raspberry Pi case. This is a FLIRC case, F-L-I-R-C. And a FLIRC case is a passive cooling case. Basically the whole thing is a heatsink. So I'm just gonna put the power button right in the top here. So what I did was I already marked where it should go. And to do that, I kind of measured and looked where I could actually put it where it's not gonna impact any of the components here. So you don't want it like directly above the CPU or pressing against this um, camera ribbon connector thing. So um, it ends up being actually just about the center of the case. So I'm gonna drill a pilot hole using a small drill bit. And if you're pressing this against a piece of wood, I don't think you have to remove the uh, plastic top. It's not gonna get screwed up because it's kind of sandwiched between the case and the wood. But if you don't, then you might wanna remove this plastic top first. Okay, and now I'm going to take my larger drill bit. This is a quarter inch drill bit. And do a test fit. All right, it fits pretty nicely. Now it looks like with the plastic cover, this is just a little bit too thick. The, uh, the threads don't come through all the way and you need to put the nut on there. So there are a couple of ways to solve this. Um, one is we can just get rid of the top and not use it. It's just aesthetic anyways, which is probably what I'll do. Um, or we could drill a larger hole just in the top so that the nut can fit in there. Or we could drill a larger hole in the case and then um, this would sit between the case and the top. So uh, I'm gonna figure out what I'm gonna do here. Okay, I'm just gonna take the path of least resistance here. I'm gonna drill a larger hole in the plastic top that's the size of the nut so that I can tighten it down and it'll look super nice. And I'm gonna go gradually up in drill bit size. And now that the nut fits through here, I'm gonna go ahead and clean up the hole a little bit with my box cutter. And reassemble everything. All right, now lastly, we need to bend the, uh, bend the wires back a little bit so that it'll fit nicely in there, nice and flat. And when we put it together, we wanna to make sure that the wires aren't gonna get stuck behind anything. So. Go ahead and reconnect this to pins five and six. There you have it. And that is how you add a power button to your flirt case. So now I'm gonna walk you through the software part. Okay, so um, after connecting your Raspberry Pi and letting it boot up, you're gonna open up terminal or command prompt, depending on if you're using Mac or Windows. And then you're gonna connect to your Raspberry Pi remotely by running SSH Pi at Raspberry Pi, where Pi is the default username and Raspberry Pi is the default host name. Now, if you're using RetroPi, it's actually gonna be Pi at RetroPi. And you can always connect to it your, using your Raspberry Pi's IP address, 192, whatever. Uh, if you know that. So we're gonna do SSH Pi at Raspberry Pi. The default password is Raspberry. And immediately after logging in, we're gonna wanna change that default password to something more secure if you haven't already by running PASSWD. Current password is Raspberry. New password is whatever you want it to be. And then re-enter your new password. Now the fastest way to set up the software part of the power button is just to use our install script that we created on our GitHub. Um, so you're just gonna go ahead and use git to run this command. So git clone and then the repository. Oh. Uh, so git is not installed on the light version of Raspbian that I have. So in that case, just do sudo apt-get install git. let that install. 
Now most versions of Raspbian have Git installed by default, but I use like the light version, which doesn't, so you'll just have to install it manually using that command if it says git command not found. Okay, so once that's done, we're gonna run git clone and then the repo. All right, and then we're gonna run the install script using this command. Okay, to test shutdown, you can push the power button now and it should disconnect you here. All right, you can see the connection was closed because I pushed the power button. So in order to wake your device after it's shut down fully, you just push it one more time. Now there's one important thing to note. If you have a Raspberry Pi 4 and you press the button to wake it and it doesn't work, then you're gonna have to do one more step. In a nutshell, there's a feature for the Raspberry Pi that they removed on the Raspberry Pi 4 for some reason, and they've added it back. But in order to get the updated firmware, you have to use a bootloader. So if you bought your Raspberry Pi within a few months of it coming out before they updated the firmware, then you'll have to do this step. If you have any other Raspberry Pi, or if you have one that came out many months after it was released, when they've actually updated the firmware, then your wake command will work automatically. So if your wake command, when you push the button, it doesn't wake your Pi up, then you'll need to do this step. So again, I have a link to this in the full guide in the video description if you prefer that. So basically what you're gonna have to do is you're gonna have to download the, the new bootloader for the Raspberry Pi and load it onto another SD card and then stick it in the Raspberry Pi and that's it. So if you don't have an extra micro SD card, then you can back up your existing one and then you can load these files onto it and then when you're done, you can restore it back. So basically you're just gonna have to take a micro SD card formatted as fat, which is what you'd normally do for the Pi, and then download the updated bootloader, which I have in the video description. I put it in the video description instead of showing it in the video because in the future, you'll download it from the Raspbian downloads page. But right now, you're gonna download it from basically a Google Drive that's provided by the Raspberry Pi Foundation. So I don't wanna put the link in the video and then it's gonna change. So it's in the video description so that when it's officially released, which should be just in a few weeks from when this video came out or, or a few months, um, then I'll go ahead and update that link. So once you download that zip, you'll see there are three files and the instructions are actually in the readme file here if you wanna read them. Um, but basically what you're gonna do is you're gonna take your blank micro SD card that's fat formatted and then you're gonna go ahead and copy these files onto that card, okay? Eject that card from your computer and then insert this card into the Raspberry Pi and then go ahead and put power onto the Pi and then wait for 10 seconds and once the bootloader is done, then the green LED will start blinking rapidly. Okay, so after about 10 seconds, you can go ahead and remove power from the uh, Pi, put your other SD card back in, um, power it on, and now your power button will both shut down and wake the Pi. Now again, you only have to do this if you have an early Raspberry Pi 4. Uh, once this new EEPROM firmware is released, it's gonna start being used in manufacturing, meaning all the new boards will have it. This problem actually affects a lot more than just this power button. Any kind of Raspberry Pi hat or accessory or board that relies on being able to like wake the Pi and you know from a, a, a deep sleep or, or off state with GPIO is having this issue. So this actually affects a lot of people and it's a, a really well-known issue. Um, but in the future, when you're watching this video, it's possible that you have a new Pi 4, you don't have to worry about it at all. Anyways, I hope you learned something today and I really enjoyed putting this video together for you. And if you enjoyed it, be sure to subscribe. Check out howchew.com for other great pie and other tech content. And as always, thank you very much for watching.